It's Music Day, a verified hit. Today's guests are Eddie Levert, Johnny Gill, and Ralph Tresvant. Join us as we discuss how to stay up during the down. A conversation with three music legends. Stay tuned. We're going to tell you stuff people won't tell you. Real talk with it. Welcome to Music Day, a verified hit. This is the podcast that invites you to listen to the real life stories behind iconic music creators and legendary music executives. Today is one of those days where I love my job. I am in the presence of three amazing men, exceptional men. I mean, all I have to do is just say their first names and you know exactly who I'm talking about. Johnny, Eddie, and Ralph. These gentlemen all started their careers as young singers, still in school, and as members of iconic singing groups. You know them, you love them, and please join me in welcoming Johnny Gill, Ralph Tresvent, and Eddie Levert. Welcome. Hey, hey. Thank you, thank you. I am so excited because I have to tell you, Millions of people owe their lives to you because they were created listening to your music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I want to start with you, Eddie, because you founded the Mascots as a quintet at 16 in 1958. And 20 years later, in 1978, Ralph founded New Edition at 10 years old. And both of you have talked about being a recording artist and performer at such a young age. So Eddie, why don't you tell me about some of the challenges of being in a group and the different opinions and parents and all that at such a young age? It, it, well, you know, everybody's gung-ho at that point and everybody wants to split everything. We're gonna split everything even. We're gonna, everybody's gonna, everything, we're gonna write everything and everything's gonna be, you know, we're gonna be all together. And then once, uh, what, what the challenges got to be, the first challenge was when we moved from the East Coast to the West Coast. And like we all staying out there with H. B. Barnum and uh, we get our own place and now we, we got to figure out how we're going to pay, pay rent and all of that. Now all of a sudden, guys start getting telegrams from home talking about you need to come home quick before, before a, uh, catastrophe falls and come to find out that these guys are sending their own self these telegrams in order to get out and go back home you know what I'm saying so you find out that you know it's a lot of it takes a lot of heart to stick with it and stay with it and and uh, you know to to be a, a real trooper in the music business that's true how about for you Ralph I think you hit on the nose, man. It takes a lot of heart, a lot of dedication, a lot of sacrifice, you know. Same same things we've encountered in being in a group. As you start out, everybody has this all for one, one for all mentality. And as time moves on, you start realizing everybody's trying to take more of advantage of what they can pull out of it for themselves kind of thing. And again, it just starts with the wear and tear of just having to put in the real work to get it done and keep it get, keep it being done repeatedly starts kicking in. And if you don't have the mindset and the heart for it and you really don't have the passion to do this in a real way, it can wear on you, man. After a while, you you know, you start asking yourself, what have you gotten into? I should or should I've taken another road in terms of being able to take care of myself. But um, overall, it has to be, uh, like you said, the, like Eddie said, the heart, the passion for it, and the dedication, man, to really want this, it, it, it kicks in after a while. After the hoopla and then you've had a few things come, a few hit records, some accolades have come. It's really hard to muster up the, that stuff that it takes to keep it going after a while. Mm -hmm. You got to keep going with it for sure. For sure. Yeah, because you, you get one hit and then it's, uh, you got to get the other one. Yeah. Now mm -hmm. you, how good, you got to get another one. And so that takes... You know, a lot of people get get into their, you know, that superstar thing, and then they they start feeling themselves, 
and you know, and then, then then you can't you can't control that part of them because you suddenly suddenly you're looking at them like, who is this cat? I don't know who this guy is. <laughs> what happened? This is not the same person we left Canton with. You know how did how did he get like this? So you have to deal with that the changing of people. I I don't think entertainers really change. I think the people around them change and that makes the entertainer has to change his outlook on them. Mm -hmm. well, That's true. That's very true. well. Yeah. And then for Johnny, you started your career as a teenager signing your first record deal with Cotillion Records with Stacey Ladisaw at 16. And you know, you've always had this manly voice, okay? So <laughs> How did you deal with having such a strong voice at such a young age, dealing with women throwing themselves at you, you know, when you were pretty much jail bait at that point? Yeah, that was cool. I was ready to go to jail. Benefits. That's what I learned about the business. As soon as I got in, this is benefits. <laughs> 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 Real. I learned early. <laughs> Ralph, how you take it, Ralph? How you, you take this guy? Only Johnny Gill, man. Only Johnny Gill. <laughs> oh, you two aren't off the hook. How about you, Ralph and Eddie? How about for you two? Because you guys were young, too. How did y'all deal with it? Well, listen, this minute. Johnny did. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, follow that cab. <laughs> I, I, I forgot that you were saying nothing. So At one he, point, I forgot no, you were paid for this. I was thinking, whoa, this is what you get? <laughs> I want more hits. I believe the people said that it might, uh, it might incriminate me. I got <laughs> <laughs> hey, Everybody's got a pass. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Oh, I, man. Well, you I'm know the reason you. why the reason why I actually got in the in the, in this game was because of the girls, you know. Mm -hmm. And you know, it wasn't about the money at first. You know, it was just like the girls are screaming. They, yeah. they they're wanting to get with me. They think I'm great. So this is really great. Then, then all of a sudden, it hits you. We went and won a contest. And they paid us $25 for five guys to win a contest, same contest. And that meant $5 a piece. And all of a sudden, it hit me. You mean we can have girls and get paid? <laughs> <laughs> hey. Like, this is the life. <laughs> you better than us. We got, we got new addition. We got $15 for our first gig. <laughs> And, and Ricky Bell's sister was supposed to be our manager at the time. And right after we won the fifteen dollars, we fired her because we didn't want to give her a cut. So we ain't got enough money. To give her. <laughs> <laughs> we, we no, that's enough. hysterical. We <laughs> learned early, yeah. We like you. We, 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 we in the money. Well, listen, while we only get a little bit of money, we got to split this up properly. We can't afford money right now, so. We're going to cut this out the equation early. <laughs> we ended that relationship real quick. <laughs> so let me ask you this. Now, Eddie, the mascots, you know, you guys went through name and member changes before becoming the OJs. And New Edition, you went through member changes as well. And looking back, could you have done anything differently to keep the group together? Aside from Ricky's sister, obviously. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm probably gonna end up in a lot of trouble. Uh, we started off with five guys, and it, it started off the mascots. Then we went to the triumphs. Then we and it, this. These were the same five guys, but as we went to different record companies and different managers, well, here change the name from this to to this. We got down to King Records, and uh, and Sid Nathan wanted to make our name the mascot. So anything to get a record out. So uh, we were the mascots at first, and then we we got this name with uh, 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 Peaches, which was Barry Gordy's ex-wife, and we 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 changed the name to Eddie OJ from Eddie Eddie OJ was managing us at the time, 
and they couldn't think of a name for the group. So we said, call the group the OJs. And so we went through all of these names and the guys, you know, it was, it, it was five guys. And then all of a sudden, but it was only three guys that was the nucleus of the group. Mm -hmm. And those three guys was Walt Williams, myself and William Powell. So when we lost the one guy to love, he fell in love with a girl in California and he went, he says, I'm going out to visit her and I'll be back. He never came back. What? And then the other member, Bobby Massey, felt like he wanted to be a, a producer and he never came back. Now, all of these guys wanted to eventually come back after, you know, they see in the big picture and, and, and we, can, we can make money at this and it can be successful. But no, at that point, we had came down to the three guys that were really the backbone of the group, and that was the group. And so we had to make that decision that this is, with these three guys, we can do whatever we want, and we can probably make it to the top. Hey. And you did. They jumped off the boat, and they, they yeah. were put back in. It wasn't that we put them out. They no, put they their own self out. Yeah. 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 And that's, hey. that's pretty common. That's pretty common, like you said earlier. <laughs> Talk about being in this business. Uh, sometimes, you know, people can can change you, but I tell you, and then there's there are artists that really truly get drunk. It's the longest high that you'll ever have. Because after you have one hit, it's like crack. You want another one, and another one, <laughs> and it's uh, you know, being in this business is quite rewarding. But it has this, you know, it has this ups and its downs. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, yeah, it's uh, you know, we've all just been really fortunate, and we've been blessed, uh, as you know, to um, to be able to do this and do this at a high level uh, for so many years uh, has been, I mean, you you know, can you put it into words how lucky, how blessed uh, we all are to be yeah. here with you even today. And it's so true. You're only, it seems like you're only as good as your last record. So just having you keep cranking it out, you know, and then for you, you know, Johnny, when you were a solo artist, then you join New Edition, then you join LSG with Gerald Levert and Keith Sweat. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, what were some of the challenges for you coming into an established group who had grown up together? Did you, did you ever feel like a fifth wheel at any point? Well, yeah, I mean, it's like a new, the, the new kid in the, in the classroom. I mean, you know, all the kids, the school year started and everybody knows everybody and you're coming in and you're the new guy. So when I came in, I boy, I got some shockers. It was like, there was a lot going on. And I, I just happened to walk into, I was like, I looked around one day and said, what kind of shit is this I done walked into? <laughs> hey, <dude. laughs> he looked at me, it was like, <laughs> I'm like, what is really going on? <laughs> said, well, I said, welcome to New Edition, man. I told you what I'm talking about, Monique. The, you know, <laughs> you, you come in the game with these guys, and then you, after success, and after a little bit of money, all of a sudden, you don't know these guys anymore. Mm -hmm. This is guy. This is guy that we, we said all for one and one for all, and we're going to do this together. All of a sudden, that's out the window, you know, and... Uh, now you're looking at him like this is a stranger. And how do you deal happened? with that? With those egos and when things start shifting, how did you guys manage that and maneuver through that? I I really think we all have one thing in common, if you really want to think about it. And it's not even just the money. Money is one, but something about hearing the audience scream and yell, and like Pop was saying earlier, to tell you how good you are or the feedback of what you're doing is great. I think we all get high off of that. And I don't, I think that it really keeps you coming back for more. <laughs> it really does. And some people can't come off of that high. Yeah. Some people get, you know, so it, it, what I found that most of the, most of the artists that are like that, you know what I'm saying? They get on that high and then they, they can't come off of it. And then they, they, they get themselves in trouble from that standpoint that they get into things that they can't get out of. Uh, you can't believe your own press. Yeah. You can't believe your own press because, you know, they'll tell you great today, but tomorrow they'll find the next guy. You know what I'm saying? The next guy is the, 
the the flavor of the month. You know, you, you got to remember, and you got to keep putting it down. And yeah. Ralph and and Johnny both can can testify to that. If you don't keep putting it down, you're gonna be put that out. You're gonna be put out. Yep. Yeah. You yeah. Know, I've seen people. I've seen fans. For I, me. Seen, uh huh. Go ahead, Johnny. Go ahead. I'll let you finish first. I was gonna say I've seen fans <laughs> actually <laughs> stand next to us and will look at me and approach me and go, Johnny, you're my favorite. And turn around and two steps, two, two feet later, they want to go, hey, Ralph, you know you're my favorite. <laughs> you realize, ultimately, yeah. that exactly. <laughs> they like what you do, but you ain't the only one. <laughs> right, don't ever, don't ever tell yourself that. <laughs> no, no, I, you guys have a lot of Oh. They both and they both hit it right on the nose, though, man. If it it's the fans. At the end of the day, when I sum it up, it's the fans, man. Asking for more, you wanting to please them again, you want to see if you can do it again. All those things come together to make you make you keep striving for. It. You know, you have the biggest. You want to always try to outdo the last thing that you did. Let me see if I can get more fans. Let me see if I can broaden this base. Let me see if I can outdo the number of records I sold the last time. And, you know, you just want to improve on yourself. And the fans drive all of that for all different yeah. kinds of reasons. To hear the screams, to see them show up at the show, to see how many places you can pack out, how many you can pack in a place, or, or what it might, whatever it might be. They, The fans, at the end of the day, they're the ones to drive you to continue doing what you're doing. I, you know, obviously, if they stop showing up, they stop screaming, if they stop asking for you and about you and checking for you, I think you would quickly lose the the luster for it. You would start feeling like it's over, it's a wrap. But as long as they keep pushing you and propelling you, you're back in that studio, you're back on that tour bus, you're back in the lab trying to make another run happen again to see if you can outdo what you just did. It's, it's ultimately based on the fans, man. For me, I know that, that's yeah. been a Mm -hmm. Even though there is so much against us, you will see me choose to protect myself and my community from the coronavirus by wearing a face covering. Because it's going to take all of us thinking about one another. And even with my face covered, you will see me. You will see me as a mother, a wife, a friend. As an athlete who gave everything to the game I love. As a father, leading by example. As a sister. An entertainer. As a champion for my people. You will see me finding a light and a dark time. To unlock our creativity and push our craft. You will see me demanding the space to tell the stories that matter. As a man who knows that tough times don't last, but tough people do. Join us in wearing a face covering to help stop the spread of the coronavirus. Because covering your face is one small act of kindness that has the power to bring us together. Yeah. Yeah. So describe to me, when you guys talk about this, the high of being on stage and having the audience yelling your name, I've always been curious, what does that feel like as an artist to be on that stage and having them yelling your name and crying? What is that? Describe that feeling for us mere mortals here. Oh, it's a good feeling. It's like sometimes when you one-on-one -on -one with your partner and you go, what's my name? And she tells you, it's <laughs> ego. You just, it just, it's something about it. It just, I don't know. <laughs> Hey, that works until she says the wrong name. Uh, Reggie. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Here. <laughs> uh. That's crazy. I love it. Okay. So, as I blush, Rafa Johnny, <laughs> when New Edition received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame after a successful BET miniseries, that, that was off the chain, by the way, that miniseries. Loved it. Mm -hmm. There was hope that there would be another New Edition tour and record. So I want you to, can you guys set the record straight about what happened? And is there a chance that New Edition will get back together again? Well, what happened, it's, it's, there's a lot of different things that took place after that, because we all were waiting for that run. But I don't think we could come together on who we was going to go out on tour with. BBD was in the process of working on a new project. I think they released a project, actually, they did called Run. And 
that kind of threw us all the way back. Like, cause we thought we were supposed to be setting our setting time aside for solo projects and individual things for the new edition run to follow up on the story, the new edition story to follow up on the, the hall of fame. I mean, the walk of fame um, ceremony, all that stuff was supposed to be this time we was, we was going to go in the studio and just start another run for new edition. And when that came into play, it kind of threw well, me and Johnny, I know it kind of threw us for a loop, but, even still within that, we were still operating and, and working at uh, toward going toward another run because we was working with, with Al Heyman at the time, right, Skills? Al was the, they were Al Heyman trying to put together. This is a, a promoter has been there for the, from day one with us, and we we're looking forward to getting back with him, but we couldn't all come to terms and working with him. And it just kind of fell apart at the scene somewhere where we couldn't come together and figure out who we wanted to go out with. Um, but ultimately, it was the BVD trying to make a new run. So we kind of had to backtrack or we kind of just lean back a minute and let them get through with what they was doing and see if we can come back to the table. And then after that, we couldn't come, we couldn't come together on who was going to do the run with us. So it kind of fell apart. Okay. Yeah. And with the name, I know you might be asking about that. That name happened to be available when we were looking up, looking for the name. Uh, you didn't mention earlier, uh, Heads of State, which was myself, Bobby and Ralph. And so the lawyer let, uh, told me that the that name was the new edition name was available, uh, and this is sitting out there. And he said that we need to definitely collect that, get that uh, before someone else gets a hold to it. So I said, great. Well, then put myself and Ralph on there, and then what we'll do is let's get everybody else on there. Once we get, we're going to do an agreement amongst ourselves, so that we can protect the integrity of new edition, which means that no one individual, that it will always be all of us that will use that name new edition so when you come you won't see three two or three different sets of new edition you'll only see one um and so that's what the whole argument the fight was about honestly uh and that's what the, the, what our intentions were from day one uh we all have worked in this and have made an impact and has contributed to this group and felt like at the end of the day this was never about going oh we're going to take the name and we're going to keep it for ourselves and all that stuff the guys just and the guys was aware of it. It's just out of nowhere. It just turned into complete chaos. But they was aware of it. It was like, yo, let's get this contract and agreement amongst us together and uh, and done so that we can um, we'll, and then we'll get everybody's put everybody's names on it and lock down. And uh, fortunately, we were able to come to full circle with that and just closed out with getting that done with the agreement that we looked for, that we asked for, that needed to be done to protect the integrity of this group. Why it took so long, I don't know, but we got it done. Yeah. And, and I guess that answers the question that there's still hope. I guess that answers the question that there's still hope for the future, you know, that we, we'll come together as we always have. This hasn't been the first time we've had back, you know, some sort of setback or some sort of obstacle to get over as, as friends and as brothers. And we've always seemed to work out, work them out over the, you know, it's almost 40 years now, which is still babies compared to Pops over there in his career. but. <laughs> At the end of the day, we've uh, throughout those years, there's been a lot going on. We've always been able to work it out and make it, you know, and see ourselves through it. So I don't see it being no different this time around either. We'll we'll get back on there and hopefully sometime soon we'll be back out there doing what we do as as a full crew as, uh, uh, again sometime soon, hopefully. Yeah, they're going to be my best friend after this COVID thing is over. And then <laughs> I get all my money again, then we ain't going to like each other no more again. <laughs> I've seen that story before, huh? <laughs> now, all of you gentlemen, you guys have been in the business for decades. And for a young Eddie, a young Johnny, a young Ralph who is trying to get their music group together and become you guys one day, what advice would you give them in terms of starting the group, maintaining it, and keeping the integrity? I love what you said about keeping the integrity of the group. Yeah. Um, one is when I'm sitting here right now and I'm looking at my pop, you got to understand that one of my idols here and I'll tell anybody, any kid, anyone that's trying to be in this game that, you know, it is important that first and foremost that you have people that, I mean, I can sit and listen to pop tell these, tell stories for days. When I go with him, sit down, I'm, I just be asking him a million and one questions, listening to him, these stories that I never get tired of hearing. You got to know where you come from and know the people and the shoulders that you ride on in order to understand and know where you're going. And that's why I love and respect and, and those that have come before, um, because I understand that that's what we have to carry that, that torch and uh, when it's been passed down. And it's important to know and have your history and understand and know where it all started. So 
I love, and it's a, you know, that's my dad there. And I still, to this day, uh, riding along sometimes, you hear some of the songs uh, on the radio and, you, and they you come on and you think, out of all of the things that have ever happened to me in, my, in this business and my greatest rewards, I would have to say it hasn't been the money. It hasn't been the accolades with the trophies. It's just been people like Stevie Wonder, it's people like my dad, that I get a chance to sit and get more uh, information and, uh, uh, and education about where this all started and how they came along and how they opened the doors for me. That's what I get my, my greatest reward. I love that. How about Eddie, for, how about from your perspective? What's some advice you would give? It, it, you, you gotta be dedicated to it. You gotta mean it from your heart. You know, like um, it was never, like Johnny said, it was never about the money. You know what I'm saying? The money just was part of it, absolutely. You know, because I wanted to do it for my family and so my family would have a better way to get into life, a better opportunity. I could open doors and they could go through the doors and make it happen for themselves. So all of that to say that, that you know, you gotta put it in, you gotta mean it. It's gotta be, it's gotta be your, your wherewithal. I don't mean your everything, but your wherewithal. It's a job and you gotta work at it and you gotta keep working at it. And the more you put in it, the more you can get back. When it's because it's going to be very rewarding at the end. How about for you, Ralph? I mean, they just summed it up. There's not a lot to add to that, you know. <laughs> that humility, that humbleness that you're still seeing pop after all the success and all the years of being in the industry, that, that says it all right there. That's what I look up to. That's what I look forward to. And that's what I think this held us and myself and New Edition throughout the years, <laughs> having a certain amount of humility about it, a real reason that you're doing this. It's not about the money. It's not about, it's want to see your family and your mom not working for hotels and scrambling the way that they were scrambling as you was coming up and you wanting to be a part of changing that. That's, that's the drive that'll keep you doing the things that you normally would give up on. You know, you, the thing, right when it seems like you would normally give up, you remember those days when your mother was scrubbing floors and your pops was struggling, selling iron and copper, the junkyards or whatever it might be. He was coming up in them hard times like that and goes, you know what? What I'm doing right here is a piece of cake compared to that. Let me go on and keep on rehearsing. Let me get better at what I'm doing. Let me keep striving to jump on this stage and on this tour. It's, it all makes it make sense to you. So what I'm doing is a lot better than I could have been doing or what I know my the people that, that raised me were, were doing. So I think it's those humble moments and those humble times and that humility right there that allows you to see the bigger picture and understand that you got it easy and may take advantage of it. Take advantage of it. You know? you know, the three of you guys have such a great synergy. Even before the call started, I mean, I've been laughing just watching you guys. It's a reality show that I would watch. How about... Uh, OJ's and New Edition tour. Well, you know, you know, I tried to get that going one time with Michael Bivens out of beating because I thought it would have been a great idea. You know, but you know, they look, they look at, they look at demographics, and and a lot of times the business gets in the place of creativity because yeah. of the fact that they'll say what well, the OJ's. That's old and the new edition is today. But we're talking about presenting some to the people that will be special and that they will spend their money on. And you can't let that be your, you, you, you can't let age and, and whose music is dated and who's not, long as it's people that you can put butts in the seats mm. and sell tickets because it's about business. It's not about none of that ego stuff. This is yeah. business. You got to remember it, uh, that, first of all, when you tell young at young acts, it's about business. This is about making money. This is a business. This is not a joke. This is like when you're thinking about those things that your you your ego is involved in. I'm well. Uh, it, it, we can't come to an agreement. The agreement is that it's about business. Let's do business. Let's come together and make this money. Let's come together and do and do business. And we also 
we have a responsibility as um, as as artists and OGs or professionals in this game, also as well, to bridge the gap. And that's the problem that we have when it gets so focused in on just the business and it gets in the way of the creativity, the creative part of it. Because, you know, one thing we know for sure, whether you're old, young, or new, it doesn't matter. One thing that we do know for sure, a great, a hit record or hit records are hit records. It doesn't matter how, what day they came out. That's why they call them classics. That means people are hearing them still all over the world, young and old. <laughs> And so this thing that we have where it's everything is just based on my targeted audience and your targeted audience, it's like people can't sometimes just don't have the vision to understand that also it's just as important for us to continue that, to carry the tie that bridge uh, the gap and to allow these generations to continue to grow and continue to blossom so that they can continue to do what we're doing. And everything is so segregated. That's what I hate about this business. Yeah. They yeah. more than anything. Everything is segregated. Everything is based on numbers. Everything is based on what, how many followers. Everything, and it, so at some point you lose really the essence of the true uh, of, of this of this artistry by not allowing art to be art, allowing people to hear and see and appreciate great quality music and work, right. and it just gets all over the place. It's just everybody's dissecting everything, cutting it up, and just separating everything. And it's just like, come on, man, that's what it's killed us. That's what it's really brought yeah. this. Right. with knees today perfectly said yeah. yeah i agree and you know looking at you guys and your career i mean you guys had the costumes you guys were dapper you guys sang music with lyrics about love and passion and it just hit your soul and what do you guys think about today's music and how it's kind of transitioned into a different realm versus bad as hell if you want to know i'm mad <laughs> Wanna know why I'm mad? Cause them fools get to go up on stage on the, in the clothes that they woke up in and go around up the stage <laughs> and they throw them turntables and they get to keep doing all of that and take all the money home. I got to dress up, I got to get my suit, I got to put everybody on the stage in clothes. I got to make sure everybody, I'm just like, what the hell did I, did I just miss something? Maybe I'm in the wrong business. <laughs> <laughs> the wrong era skills. Oh my God, you hit it on the nose with that one, maybe. Now, now you got to like, uh, 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 what when... uh oh, Ralph, we lost you. You're on mute. We lost you. You okay. sounded like that just now. That was hilarious, bro. <laughs> This guy, my man, like little Richard. I was the first one to woo, <laughs> and they didn't give me nothing. Uh, 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 shut up. <laughs> He just didn't use the shut up, right? Don't trip, tie your shoes. <laughs> they didn't give me nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> well, you know, I, th I think that I think the young kids are geniuses. They they are the dance music of today. I I, I think that they and the way they put it together that that's some creative. That's some really creative greatness there, you know, like the your Kanye's and your and your Jay Z's and all of that. Now, now when they get past that, you know, they sort of lose me because I don't know, I don't know who thought that it was a great idea to have your pants down below your butt. <laughs> you can't run if somebody get after you. You're gonna you're gonna fall. You're not gonna make it. You're not gonna make it. You know that, John. You <laughs> Ralph, y'all know that you can't run with your pants down like that. <laughs> that wasn't a great idea. It wasn't. A great, I love hip hop. I love. Look, man, I admire these guys. You know they're able to come along and make money at this. But yeah. some of their some of their styling. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I can. I look at this age. With my pants down, <laughs> yeah, here, I am here we are yelling, "Daddy, is that you?" <laughs> <laughs> no, don't do it. Keep it close. You, you don't want to the crowd, bro. Don't do it. If I see you out there with some pants down on your ankles, I'm giving it up. I'm turning in. My <laughs> 
<laughs> but you know, mu music is a form of art. And I, I've often, I've always said that. And I'd say that just because I look at the painting and it doesn't really move me, does not make the painting ugly or unattractive or doesn't make it worth anything. Uh, that's the thing that I've learned and tried to keep that attitude for, you know, being in this business to understand that music is constantly changing and it's, it's, it goes in different directions. And you really got to keep yourself open to it uh, to, in order to understand it, to appreciate it, and to not put yourself in a position or in a place where uh, you, you reach a point where you hit that wall where you can no longer understand um, uh, just the different styles of music because it's all a language, but it's also an art that we all can and should be able to appreciate. So the young ones, I appreciate a lot of their stuff too. Though I don't know what the hell they're saying, they still have my head bothered. Right I'm just like, what did you just say? Oh. <laughs> All right, must be his cousin. Somebody talking about. <laughs> you just think, hey, John, are you just thinking about all that money you spent on the band members and hotels throughout the years that you could have saved, man? That's all. That's I'm what he think about. You do, you do. Man, I get up angry every time I see him walk up on the stage. Oh yeah, test, test, one, two, one, two. I'm like, can you count any further? Jesus. <laughs> I, yeah, I hate him. I hate them all. <laughs> So okay, we we okay. We know you have a strong feeling about it, John. Um, do you ever feel pressure to mimic the sounds of trap R and B? And you you know any pressure for that? No, no. I'm in, I'm a musician, so I'm inspired by sounds. I'm inspired by melodies, notes, uh, conversation. It could come from anywhere for me. So I keep myself open to all those things, and I enjoy a lot of music uh, that's out today. And and it's it, I I'm still inspired. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't, I'm, I know who I am, would never compromise who Johnny is and lose the essence of, of who I am. I, I love, and like I said, inspired by different music and can take a little bit of everything and still put it in here, but at the same time, maintain being who I am because uh, I'm secure with who I am and, um, and not compromising that. I'm finna compromise every month. I'm leaving the band home next time. I'm keeping all my money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving the, the band, I'm leaving the crew. I'm just gonna be me outside. I ain't gonna have no security or nothing. Oh, you really going to like Chuck Berry. Chuck Berry shows up with his guitar, his gun, and his money, uh, and a rental car, and then they meet him over there, and he goes get his money, gets on play, and then he bounces. And he don't have nobody yeah. traveling, just him. Chuck that, Berry, yeah, he I'm just carries the guitar. Yeah. That's plugged up. Just and coming plugged up. up. It's his D&D. &D. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's the future of the game for me, baby. I'm giving it up. Now, how about blending today's producers with your voices? Is that something like with conscious music, like with backstabbers? That can that, well, they've used this records in in so many in so many. What do the kids do? They 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 take your track and put another song mm -hmm. over it. Yeah, you sample, know yeah. yeah, sample your stuff and. And, and so, so they, they've been able, I, like I said before, I think they're genius because they're able to take something that's old and make it brand new. They've been mm -hmm. able to, you know, the, their melodies and the way they put melodies on top of this music today is very tricky and very smart and very on time. Mm -hmm. And I like, I like all of that stuff. Now with mm -hmm. me being with a new producer and, you know, I, I always had this attitude. A great song is a great song, no matter who's doing it. And if you can put your voice on it and get it on there straight, then it's gonna win. Show some respect. Show you give a damn. Show the world how it's done. Show them that when your community needed you the most, you showed up. Mask up, America. Like that. And speaking of which, Johnny and Ralph, let's talk about your partnership because Ralph was a guest on Johnny's song, Perfect. And now Johnny is a guest on Ralph's single, All Mine, and both of you guys have your own record label. So tell us how it came together and how the partnership is structured. And if you guys are signing new artists, you're like. And for me, 
for me, excuse me, for me, Johnny, uh, I watched Johnny put his thing together as an individual. I watched him slowly go through the ups and downs and build his team and his, his staff together for first starting with the um, – with the still winning album. I think that was the first one, wasn't it skills? Was still winning. Then he went into the game changer. Then now he's with the game changer too. So I was just watching him fine tune this thing that that we've always talked about. And you always talked about putting your own career in your own hands and making sure that you didn't have to go through anybody else to eat and make sure that down the line, you want to always be able to feed your fan, feed yourself without having to answer to no man. No other person's going to tell you that you can't put records out. You can't continue to do what you do for a living. And I watched him slowly fine tune in this situation where all these other labels would take artists from our generation and our era and kind of, if some of them would take a chance with you because they knew you had a strong follow and they knew that you had a, a nice career. So they might take a chance with you and throw you against the wall and see what sticks. But I watched Johnny fight through all of that and put his own situation together where he wasn't, he wasn't gonna just be stuck up against the wall with a bunch of artists to see which one stick. He was gonna make sure he did the necessary things that the, that the labels of, of old used to do to make sure a record was in people's faces, to make sure it got a chance to be heard and win. And I watched him go through the ups and downs where if somebody wanted to stop pushing a particular record because whoever he was in bed with at the time um, wanted to stop and he would, nah, I'm pushing it on my own. Stop putting his own money, his own, my, you know, it started moving it itself, and I watched him go around them and to wake them back up. Like once the record started picking up and moving steam, they come back to him, all apologies and okay, can I, can we get the next one? And here's the money for the next one. You know, they started and started listening a little more. So when I saw him do that, I he came to me one day, said, "Man, what you gonna do? Now that you see that I, I'm up and running, won't you just come do your thing over here with me, man? You come do it and rock with me over here the way I'm doing." And I I have already been watching and a fan of how he had put it together. So it was. It just made perfect sense to me. It was easy for me to say, hey, that's my brother. I know he ain't gonna throw me up against the wall and try to see if boy sticks. He's gonna take it serious. He's gonna do my thing the same way that he does himself. That's and good. that's what he did. So when I got with him, I said, okay, I'm not gonna go over and take some chance with somebody who may or may not live up to their words, who may or may not take what we're doing serious. Uh, I'm gonna go with my brother. And so we he, he helped me put together um, a situation where the both of us, teamed up as Nostap and as J Skill Records and we went and found a distributor over in SRG and put out the single man and that's how I came to be back on the scene Johnny sitting around saying everybody's up and rocking with their own lanes as individuals man what you gonna do you gonna keep waiting around for another new edition run you gonna keep making waiting around to uh, everybody else wants to move before you could go eat or you gonna keep operating and getting your thing up and running like you like you should be and it just woke me up. It just woke me up out of this kind of, I've always been pro new edition, just out of this kind of a, almost a stupor, I call it. It's like, man, what am I sleeping on? What am I doing this for? They may never want to go back out again one day or one of these years. And I haven't opened up enough of my own lane to be able to, to be able to, to handle that, you know? So when he came to me, he was speaking from the heart. He was speaking as a brother who was concerned about me just sitting around and not really taking advantage of, what I am and my own gifts and my own crafts. And yeah. and, I, and I said, oh, well, you know what? You're right, big bro. And so he sent me to, he came to me with the All Mine record. He's the one the song was sent to him. He said, I got something for you. I, I, think, you want, I think you might want to hear this, man. It sounds like something you would do. I heard the record and I immediately got what he was saying. I went and recorded at his house. A few days later, about maybe four or five days later, he sent it back to me with him on it. And I heard that magic. I heard that combination that what we had on Can You Stand the Rain and that we had on Perfect and Boys to Men. Throughout the years when me and Johnny's textures meet the right way, they just seem to work. They bring the best of these two worlds together. Almost like how Eddie, how Pop and, 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 and his man, well, I can't remember. Oh, yeah. Man, when that smooth with that roughness come together. It's funny that that's just, but it came, it came together like that. Me and Johnny kind of have a, a, a thing that does what their voices do together. You know, when he comes with that, ooh, you're my darling, darling. And he was really smooth with it. And then Pop, you know, run everything. And how they just play. They work when they do it right. That's what me and Johnny's been kind of taking. We've grabbed the right, we've kind of grabbed that torch in a way and that sound and how those two textures work together. And I heard that on All Mine and said, that's the one. And the rest has been history, man. That's how that's how me and his thing came together. We've always been friends ever since with that story he just told you about when we did the the Heartbreak album with New Edition. 
And one day he just came to me after kind of assessing everything. He said to me, he said, man, what have I gotten myself into? And I said, welcome to New Edition, man. And <laughs> we haven't looked since. We've been boys and, and looking out for each other however we can ever since then. And we still do it to this day. A lot of the stuff we talk about and go through don't have nothing to do with music. Man, yeah. Johnny just wants to know what's going on with my family. Where am I sitting? I want to know about how his mom is doing, how his brother's doing. Um, you know, just stuff that don't have to do with the industry. Real real brother stuff, real friend stuff, man. That's what we talk about 90% of the time. Then we squeeze some music stuff in there every now and then. Yeah. You know, Interesting. Because sometimes it feels like almost like survivor's remorse. Kind of, you know, you're so used to being part of a group that you want to do your individual projects and then you have this guilt of branching out on your own. How do you guys work through that guilt? Cause that, it seems like that's a trending feeling a lot of times. I've had that more than Johnny was started out as an individual. He was a, he was a solo artist coming in the game mm -hmm. and then branched out into these different groups. And I started out in a group. So it, it more fits me and probably Pop as well because they started out more in a group situation where trying to do your own thing, you felt selfish. Mm -hmm. You know, you feel a little bit like you're leaving everybody out. Or you just, you, I get that feeling more than I think Johnny has. How I got out of it as I watched everybody else just reaching for whatever they could grab on the way up. Like, as we move into success, I'm watching everybody else grab stuff. I'm like, hey, hey, wait a minute. It's nothing. Hey, and I've got nothing to be guilty. <laughs> Once you see everybody else doing it, it's like, hey, I better get one too before it's too late. You know, I just realized that that's what broke it down for me. Watching everybody slowly go after their own dreams and reach for all these other accolades outside of the group. That, put, that brought my guards down. I said, okay, I can go for my suit. I told him, I was like, come on out of retirement, man. What are you doing over yeah, here? Come on, time to come out of retirement. Nah, he did. He came, at, he came at me as a real brother. So what you going to do, man? What you going to do? Man. Everybody, Rick, BBD can move around. Bobby can move around. As in, I can move around. We've etched these lanes for ourselves. What you going to do? And I've kind of tapped on it here and there throughout the years, but never really – did all of the things that I could have really done as as an individual. And so, it's not too late. You yeah, still here. It's that's so how it. Be honest. That's how Ralph, the most dangerous thing about Ralph to me is he reminds me of in, in the same kind of a situation that Uncle Charlie is in. Uncle Charlie was with the Gap Band for many many years, and they had gigantic hits. People didn't even one point, at one point. And the thing, the difference about Ralph is everybody knows who Ralph is. And Uncle Charlie, they didn't know who he was, that he was the same guy from the Gap Band, because uh, they, they never knew his name. They just knew the Gap Band. And when you look at, I was telling Ralph, when I look at his, his, his career and I look at his track record, and you look at all, all of those hit records that he sang on for New Edition, then you add his stuff, and then to take what he has there, the, the, he's probably the most deadliest and the most dangerous one to... Uh, if we had to all go solo and all of the uh, catalog that he has to work with, <laughs> it'll be a long night. <laughs> yeah, well, see, I don't like none of these guys. Man. It'll be a long <laughs> night. <laughs> I don't like Ralph. I don't like Johnny. You know, <laughs> I've been, I've been, a, right, right, I've, been right. a, I've been in a group forever, forever. And it was, you know, my mom, that was my my home with these guys. This this is uh, these guys. We grew up together, and so when Gerald came to me and says, "I got this record, uh, baby, hold on to me," uh -huh. and so and, and he says, "I'm gonna play it for you, Dad." And I go in there and I listen to it, and I think and I'm thinking to myself, "Now he's been trying to tell me, Dad, you need to come on and." And Johnny knows this, Dad. You need to come on and cut your own stuff. You need to be on. You need to do some different stuff. So I went. I, I listened to this record, and I told him. I said, Gerald. I said, you know, that's a really great record. But I said, if you really want to make it really great, you need to put my voice on it. So he, <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want to do it. He didn't want to do it. He didn't, I, had to, I had to twist his arm. And so finally, when we did it, we did that. And then we did Wind Beneath My Wings. That was, it was never my intentions to, to leave the group. It was just that I, you know, 
I wanted to venture and do other things and more than just the group. I, yeah. I, 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 I love the group. I, I, we did some great things together, but I also, there was other music that I wanted to feel that I couldn't do with the group. That's and right. So I, I, I had to venture out from there to do something different. And never in, in the intentions to leave the group. I, you know, I'll be a, a, an OJ until I die. That's right. That's right. <laughs> mistake they made, I didn't make that mistake. I started out early as a solo artist, then I went into the group. <laughs> then I went out, then I went into another group. Then I went into another So they could never just go, hey, were well, you trying to lead a group? It's like, which one? Which group? <laughs> 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 yeah, man, if I only knew what I knew then, what I know now. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Because you got to remember the real story of Philly International is that when when we first went there, everybody we recorded and uh, uh, Chess Records was distributing at that time. Mm -hmm. Leonard Chess died and nobody got paid. So everybody grabbed their marbles and said, I'm going on. Y'all ain't giving me no money. So when Gamble and Huff made their new deal with CBS, they they, they were uh, they said okay. They called they call me up say guys we got a new deal. Want you guys come on back to Philly and let's do some new stuff. This is before Backstabbers because Backstabbers wow. was coming. Wow. So I went back to I I tried to tell the rest that Walt and Will and Bobby come on man I'm going up to Philly because. Gambling and them said they got a new deal. Let's go do it. They and and they said, Oh no, nah, man, they didn't pay us. I ain't going. I don't want to go. I said, But man, that's as close as we ever got to being a real hit, to getting a real. The, the sound that we was getting with these guys were better than any sound that we've ever gotten. So I'm going up here, man. I'm going. So I, Kenny told me, said, Well, if they're not gonna come, you come on and we'll cut you. Mm. So when I got up there, and I got to hearing the songs, like the backstabbers of You Are My Sunshine, mm -hmm. and all of that stuff, and I love music, I called them up. I said, I said, I said black people, y'all need to come on up here. <laughs> y'all need, need to get on up here. But uh, because I was, that just shows you how much I was into the group. They wanted right. to record me. I could have done that stuff, you know what I'm saying? I maybe could have been a Teddy Pendergrass, but my heart was still with the group. That's what wow. I want. Wow, wow, wow. To think that yeah. you that was that could have been the launch of your own yeah, personal. Absolutely, absolutely. And still got in there and then conflicts and then still, you know, with all of that going on, people still couldn't come to grips with where where they were. You know. Yeah. You got to remember, this is a, this is something that that God gives you, you know, right. what I mean? and you need to take advantage of it, and you need to not not think that you're special because you got Johnny Gill, you got Ralph Tresmont, you got Stevie Wonders, you got Marvin Gaye, you got Ronnie Isley, you got Charlie Wilson. So how special are you? Hmm. 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 You know what, I find so fascinating just watching you gentlemen together. You know, I noticed how you call Eddie Pop and there's such a beautiful mutual respect. And Eddie, I just have to say condolences on Gerald and Sean. I mean, my heart goes out to you. And um, I tell you, I got goosebumps listening to you mentioning Gerald and how he encouraged you. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Johnny, Johnny, I tell you how he was always on me about you need to cut your own record. You need to do your own stuff. You need to come on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad that he that he got him, he finally did it. Sean used to just look at me and go, cause I didn't record for about 16 years. He goes, just one, just one. <laughs> You're gonna do just one. And I would go, I'm gonna do it, man. I'm gonna do it. Yeah, he ain't doing nothing. He ain't gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> and I know he had, I know, I know, Johnny. You, I know you had to bring, drag Ralph out of the house to do this. I oh my God! I was like, "Come on, man, it's time to come out of retirement, baby. What we doing? Come on!" <laughs> I gotta remember. 
one of their first gigs they did with the OJs in Buffalo, New York, when they were yeah. just little boys. They wow. were just coming on the scene when they were still, uh, what's my man's name that was cutting you all in Philly, up in, uh, up in, uh, what's in Boston? Uh, your man, uh, uh, Maurice. Maurice. Yeah, yeah, Maurice, Maurice. Yeah. 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 And when you, when you, when they were first, when we did a gig with them in Buffalo, New York, very first time, I'm talking about, well, who is these little brats? <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> we, we got to contend with this. <laughs> They bring me bad luck. <laughs> you guys are cracking me up. So I assume the surrogate father relationship started before, was that before Gerald's passing or after? Or Way it? before. You know, because oh, I, knew okay. them. I knew Bobby and you know, before he even married uh, Whitney and, you know, him and Whitney used to come to our shows and just hang in the backstage era all night until they put us out of the, the building. They put us out of the building. And I, met, I talked to Pop on the phone. Uh, he, I think he came, it might have been in L.A. when we was doing the, uh, we did the Heartbreak Tour. I'll never forget Pop telling me, I don't know who and how we got connected on the phone. And he told me, he said, he said, John, man, listen, man, you, 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 you got to pace yourself, man. You got to pace yourself, man. You, you, you can't, you can't do that, man. You, 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 listen, man, you, you, you want to be around for a long time. You got to pace yourself, man. You're going hard, man. You got to pace yourself. <laughs> well, Johnny was going from, from note one. He was trying to kill every note. And I'm talking about, John, you got to. Pace yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you got to go, don't try to kill him on every note. That was going to heartbreak too. That's how my first introduction. <laughs> Johnny was trying to cut him bad. He was trying yeah, to cut he, him. Wasn't he, Ralph? He was trying to <laughs> kill him. Wasn't he? Going for blood uh, every you night. Know, man. <laughs> I still more than you. They still going. Who is that guy? Who's the new guy? Who's the new guy? Because you know, I was still. I I didn't until I joined their group. That's what. Uh, gave gave me the opportunity and gave me that exposure. The uh, kids and people that didn't know who I was, so it was like when I leave it out of here. If you don't know who I am, you'll know. <laughs> you right. <laughs> yeah, you because remember me. I, I ain't leaving nothing in here. I just want to make sure you know. So then you start hearing, oh, "Who's that new guy?" <laughs> you hit it right on the nose, Pop. Every night, John was trying to slay him. He was trying to <laughs> look. Look. It's it gave me yeah. my, t my, my, well, my. I used to, I, I had to tell him, come on, John, now, you just need to pace yourself. You're trying to, you're trying to, you're trying to annihilate these people. <laughs> you can't do these people like that. I'm like, Pop, I need them to know my name. I need to get my check, too. Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> now, speaking of which, you then went on to LSG. And that, you know, more hits there. So that had to be interesting for you, Eddie, watching your son, your surrogate son performing together as well. Tell us how that came about and what you learned from that experience with LSG. Well, that's, once again, we're, we're gonna talk about business. These are three guys who came together to do business and they didn't quite, they didn't see eye to eye. Now, Johnny and Gerald, they were just like oh, two geez. peas in, in a pod, but you know, <laughs> he, Keith, Keith is, a, is a, you know, Keith and had all kind of records. With Keith. Keith is a, he's a, he, he's my son too, but he's, he's a weird son. He's a weird son. <laughs> 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 but, you know, Keith does not suffer from, from uh, uh, low self-esteem. <laughs> Am I lying? <laughs> and so working with the three of them, seeing them do what they do, and to see it be a success was just so gratifying for me because this was a dream that that Joe had, Johnny had, and they had to talk Keith into it. Because Keith, I'm not doing no choreography. I ain't yeah. dancing. I ain't doing it used to be. 
Me and Keith were just talking about this last week. We was talking about, remember that time? And I was like, yeah, which time? Because they would go at it for like, him and Gerald go at it. And Gerald's like, listen, man, that's some bull. Man, you, you's a selfish mother. And they be going at it. Y'all, yeah, man. Why you have to be me like that? I'm a grown man, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you me like that. <laughs> and they in there, you can hear them scream all the way down the hall. 10 minutes later, you want to break here. Y'all want to <laughs> <laughs> they, they ride back. <laughs> Your turn. Your turn. I had front row seat to it all, and I would be in there freaking screaming, crying with tears coming out of my eyes. <laughs> and then we go and go and slam and shut it down. <laughs> yeah, that that was the amazing part. They would go through all of this, all of this. <laughs> Get that cheek sweat. You know, Dad, I'm I'm on I'm on I'm on I'm gonna kick his I'm I'm, I'm on really <laughs> and, and then they go out and, and then, then they go out ten minutes later. The crowd would later. go Nothing crazy. <laughs> the crowd would go crazy and then they, they come right back and drink a whole bottle of him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the brown liquor. <laughs> oh, those were the freaking good old days. <laughs> so, so much fun. And Gerald could finish my sentence, I could finish his. I mean, that's, yes, he was always like, <laughs> just on that same page. It was uh, that, let me tell you, uh, and I remember Keith, um, Sylvia didn't want Keith to do, the, do that project with us. And originally it was supposed to be myself, Keith, Gerald, and R. Kelly. Oh. And, and uh, yeah, Sylvia didn't want uh, Gerald, to, I mean, uh, uh, Keith to do it, because he had just came off of his biggest album, yes. like four million, five million. Plus, and she was like, why are you doing that? You didn't do that. And Swift was like, yeah, man. Yeah, you can't tell me what to do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's him. That's him. <laughs> he, he, and he ended up doing it with us. And we, uh, it just, it was absolutely uh, a huute success. So uh, I, one that, that's, if there was ever one thing that I am so grateful that I got a chance to do in my life, in my career, and that was to work with both of my brothers, Keith and Gerald, that's, I, you know, uh, what a blessing that was. Yeah. Yeah. Eddie, how was it for you stepping in for a few for a few performances after the passing of Gerald um, with LSG? Very, very, you know, look, the only part I hate about it, see, they don't like to rehearse. See, I, I like to rehearse. They want, <laughs> they want me to, you know, come on, man, let's practice so I'll really know what I'm doing. No, you got it. You got it, Pops. You you got no, I don't got it. I don't I don't on his toes. Like, come on, Pat. Come on. I mean, we're gonna keep him on his toes. We don't wanna get get content, get comfortable. We like I mean, I mean really, really, Ralph, they would never rehearse. They didn't want to rehearse. Man, I'm talking about come on, guys. I need to learn the song. Come on, you got it. You got it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You got it. Donnie I'm Gill, Donnie, that's Donnie Gill train. When we first was doing new addition, Donnie was like, I don't know about this choreography part. I said, man, listen, that's the major part. That's a huge part of new edition. What you mean you don't know about the choreography? Man, y'all just just wheel me out there in a wheelchair. Let me hand, hand me a microphone. <laughs> He I thought if you know now it seemed like Johnny was getting used to it, man. What's happening? You went you you backtracked during the LSG days, man. Yeah. Well no, keep keep no, made Keith him was the one. He was like, nah, <laughs> keep, nah. I'm not and doing girl like, yo, man, we gotta do something in the background. He's doing whatever. And keep going, yo, man, I'll be doing all that, you know what I'm saying? Uh, okay, and that makes like, sense. Keith be doing the choreography. He's used oh, to just being the lit him up. He That's lit it. him up and was making him have to do choreography. That was the funniest thing you ever <laughs> do <laughs> in your life. <laughs> he, he look. He, you, if you mentioned choreography, even now, if you mentioned choreography, you'll turn hostile. That's that choreography of practice. How are you guys managing right now with COVID and not being able to go on tour? And because you guys talk about the high and loving being on tour, how are you guys handling this right now? Well, yeah, well, it's, it's, it, it, you know, it's, it's like, uh, Usually, I'm I'm never at home during this period of the year. We're usually on the road 
going, either coming or going, or, or we go out for the weekend, we're back on Monday and we're out again. But, you know, this is the first time, Monique, that I've had a chance to really enjoy my house. And uh, uh, I, I, I get a chance to, to sit around like nothing to do. But it's becoming um, a little pressing now because, you know, all money going out, ain't nothing coming in. That ain't going to last long. <laughs> that ain't going to last long. So. Right now, I'm a bum. Yes, that's right. So I, I you know, we, uh, yeah, I miss it. I, I, I miss the people. I miss the camaraderie. Yeah. Most of all, the camaraderie of being with the guys, of being able to see or passing some of the guys in the airport, or seeing some of the guys in the route of doing the work. Um, and a lot of people that that you that you usually see and you able to say hello to, you don't have the chance now, and so it just it just seems like a little strange that you you you're not doing what you you normally do. Now, Eddie, though, I did see your TikTok video with your daughter <laughs> and your wife, <laughs> so you still getting the moves in. I saw you getting it in. That, that hurt, Monique. That really hurt. <laughs> My back, my leg. <laughs> and I see, I've been seeing your IG live. You, you're doing the IG live. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Johnny did that with me. Johnny, yeah. we're going to have to do that again. Ralph, you need to come yeah. on my IG live, man. I got to run in there one of these days, man. I don't be yeah. running the lives. I just started getting into it, Pop. So I'm going I'm to jump on there with you. Just let me know. All right, man. for sure. Yeah. You got to do it. John, we need to do it again because we didn't c cover enough of the space. Yeah. Monique is covering everything. I'm, I'm trying. I'm like, yes. I know we don't have a lot of time, but I'm trying to get everything. What are you, Ralph, Johnny? What are you guys doing right now to kind of keep yourselves busy? I'm this doing it. I'm feeling like pop. I'm passing him right now. With all mine, it's he's uh, he came out and uh, and and smashing them. So uh, his is out. Got him up and running. Getting ready to try to get his second single ready to go. And then uh, I got my third single that's getting ready to come off of the uh, Game Changer Two album. Once this COVID thing had shut down, we kind of shut everything down. But now we're getting ready to crank back up with the Game Changer 2 album. And uh, we're just going to keep putting out great music. I haven't heard anybody tell me yet they're tired of hearing great quality music. <laughs> so yeah. we keep it rocking. I'm on the same page. Just gearing up for the next movement. I feel like somebody just took my favorite toy away, man, sitting in the house, yeah. not being able to move on these stores, uh, on, these, on these stages, man. Yeah, like Pop said, usually around this time, we're doing something in front of somebody's crowd, in and out, making sure that, you know, we're part of just just what we've been doing all our lives, man. When you're something that you've been doing for years and years and years, and all of a sudden you can't do it, or you don't know when you're going to be able to do it again, it's, it's, it's kind of surreal. It's kind of, you know... It's kind of scary to me because, like Pop said, man, you're just watching stuff go out and you're not yeah. watching it, no real projection on how to bring it in. Putting out these records and being able to move around and do these things online, they they cool, but it's nothing like that live interaction, that, that like Pop said, the camaraderie when you got your other band members and your bandmates, um, the, the audience right there, live feedback in front of you, that's, that's what I'm used to. I'm not used to feeling it through the phone and not really – being able to feel that electricity that's in the room and in the air when you perform and stuff like that. So I'm I'm kind of going through withdrawals, man. I got to get back out there. <laughs> I don't know what's going to now with me, man. You're going to catch me in the corner looking like looking like one of the movies with Chris Rock when one in the movie when he's like, hey, I got it. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's, it's really tough, but Doing these records, finding these new singles, trying to finish this album, that's been taking up a lot of that space. So I know that in between then, that's usually one of the one of the um the in between stages anyways, putting the records together, putting the music together for another run. So that's helping me kind of offset the feeling of not being able to go out there. Hopefully by the time it's up and running and really dropping the album and the rest of the project. That some of this is over, man. It'll be to be in a space where we can actually get back in there and feel that type of energy, you know, that live, live energy. That's yeah. that's what I'm hoping. Well, now, before saying, I let you guys, oh, go, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, well, they're saying we won't be able to get back to work until 2021, around August or September of next year, man. That's what they're saying. 
That's that's okay. something. you rise this is where you shine this is where you become the greatest of all time history in the making this is history in the making history in the making vote for your life mm. now before i let you go we have a historic election coming up a game changer election no pun intended and i mean i've already seen the love train uh, Biden Harris video with you and OJ. I like that. I just told Pop about that earlier. <laughs> I love it. What like? What are some other things you guys can do to help push people to vote and get out there? They need to understand that this is uh, the, the the voting. You know, and plus now with the with the with the with the Republicans and that are in office now, they're trying to uh, 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 say that you know mail in voting don't count, and so now we're gonna discredit that. Uh, they trying to divert our attention from the fact that they just shot this guy in the back seven times uh, in his car with his back to him. They're diverting our attention that they're, they're passing laws that does not, uh, that, that, that don't, uh, it's not for colored people of color. They're passing laws and they're doing things that, uh, you know, and I don't understand how some of my counterparts uh, who are Trump supporters are going to look over some of these things that we're talking about. I can't forget about their hanging and, and lynching and, and burning and bombing and that they have done. I'm going to always remember it. I might forgive you but I'm not going to forget. Do you understand? And anybody who feels like uh, we've come a, great, uh, a long ways now and that era is over with, I'm telling you, you're dreaming. Because these people, at, at, at the end of the day, their bottom line is that we're going to use force if we have to. We're going to use bullets. We're going to use bombs. We're going to do whatever we can to keep things the way they are. And that's that's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with evil. And it's, it's about good versus evil. That's what we're at. I agree. Yeah. yeah, and we need people to get out there to and to vote. But I'm not going to just try to be politically correct and say get out there and vote. I'm saying get out there and vote and get Trump up out of there. So I'm mm -hmm. not just talking that about to be correct. I'm <laughs> talking I'm going direct to you, to all of you that are voting, that I'm asking to vote. I'm asking you to give us your vote to get Trump out of office. This is not about politics. This man is beyond politics. I don't have a problem with Republicans and Democrats and them having their own ide ideology of what they believe the world is supposed to be in their opinions. I get all of that, not a problem. But this guy is beyond, this is not, it's got nothing to do with politics. And if you send, if we send an Ameri a message to, to the world and that America, that this is the kind of leadership that we, we're willing to accept, and this is who we got running and the mouthpiece for us as Americans. I'm just trying to tell you, we have lowered our standards to the lowest of the lowest. And at this point, knowing what we know about him, seeing all the things that we've seen about him, this shows nothing that has to do nothing with just politics. This is just a horrible, mean, malicious, evil human being who's got no business being in nobody's office, running nobody's business but his own. And it is up to us to make the difference, to show up and to show out and figure out what we need to do, get started early with the voting. So if we know we're going to have these kind of issues, let's get started as quickly and as soon as we can Absolutely. to make sure our votes count. Because this is very, I don't want a John Lewis life to be in vain. I think what he said before he left here, I believe that, and I'm hoping and praying that if for no other reason for, the, for this man's hard work that he put in, that we will prevail and do what we're supposed to do, do our parts to make a difference and get this guy out of office and bring just a human being in office. I don't care whether you're Republican or Democrat, it doesn't matter. But let's put a human being back in office. <laughs> I love, that should be a hat. <laughs> I like that. I like that. That's great. How about for you, Ralph? 
Stand up on it. My brother said it all, man. What else can you possibly say? We have two birds that flock together. You know, yeah. the same feathers. We flock together. So I I have this, I, my sentiments exactly. There's nothing to be added and never subtracted from what he just said. I could sit here and try to just make something that sounds greater or better, and it's not going to happen. He hit it on the nose, man. We got to get somebody better in the office. Stop all this division. Stop all this uncertainty and give us a sense of the country being stirred back in the right direction, the direction that we know it needs to be going in. It should have been going in a long time ago, but, you know, we have four years of trying to um, feel our way through this one, and we see where that's gotten us. Let's not do it for another four. Let's get this one done the right way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you guys, I this has been so much fun. I could talk to you guys for a few more hours, <laughs> um, but I so enjoyed my time with you guys, and thank you guys for making exceptional music for being exceptional men for showing the world what classy dignified black men do and look like um i'm so thankful for you guys and thank you so much for being on music day of verified hits thanks thank man. you thank you thank you miss monique all right music day a verified hit is presented by the living legends foundation inc real talk with experience. Executive producers are Jacqueline Reinhardt, Mark Hill, Ken Johnson, and Pat Shields. Our associate producers are Shannon Henderson, Sheila Eldridge, Tony Winger, Vivian Scott Chu, and Varnell Johnson. Production by Mark Hill Creative. Talent booking Black.LLC. Theme music by Wendell Wellman for Star Maker Global. Interstitial music by William Reinhardt. And I'm your announcer, Jay Johnson.